can autism become deadly? Fight or flight response may be triggered by a host of stimuli, including alarms, sirens, helicopters, whistles, smoke detectors, and fast engines. Even something as simple as barber clippers, lawn mowers, loud music, or vacuums. Proper command implementation. For people who deal with autism, the commands and requests must be done in singular part segments. For example, stop must be given proper time to comply, maybe a pause of time. In most situations dealing with law enforcement and the autistic community, the following commands are yelled or given in combative nature sending the victim into a fight or flight mode. Stop! Put your hands in the air, get on the ground, get on your knees. Now! Don't lay on your stomach and don't move. Don't make me shoot. Not wanting to make eye contact to inability to answer their own name being called. Individuals with autism will not even acknowledge their name being called by their parents or teachers at point blank range several times. But somehow, law enforcement wants autistic individuals to comply with at least five commands in five seconds. If officers in the following clips were aware of autistic mannerisms and behaviors, Elijah McLean and Ryan Gaynor may be alive today. It's August 24, 2019 in Aurora, Colorado. A security camera picks up 23-year-old Elijah McLean at this Shell gas station buying soft drinks and wearing a face mask. His family lawyer told NBC News he was in the habit of wearing this mask. After paying for his items, he turns around and bows to the man behind him in line. His family told NBC News this was his signature gratitude bow. At 10.30 p.m., a man calls 911. He has a mask on. He looks dirty. He might be okay. a good person or a bad person. Yeah. So, uh, mask on. Okay. Were any weapons involved or mentioned? No. Okay. What color is the mask or what does it look like? Black. Black mask? It's like a... Is it like a ski mask or what type of mask is it? Yeah, it's like a ski mask. Elijah McLean is walking home from a nearby Shell gas station. He's holding a plastic bag with his purchases. At 10.43 p.m., Aurora police officer Nathan Woodyard spots McLean. Your favor, stop right there. Hey, stop right there. Stop. 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 I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Nine seconds after exiting his vehicle, the officer initiates physical contact. 10.44 p.m., Officer Jason Rosenblatt and Officer Randy Wodema are now also on the scene and surround McLean. No, I am an introvert. Please respect the boundaries that I am speaking. Stop tensing up. Stop. Relax. I'm going home. Relax or I'm going to have to change this situation. Stop. Leave me alone. Sir, can you please... No, we don't want to you right? leave me alone. No, we're going to talk First off, to you, you guys started to arrest me, and I was stopping my music to listen. Now let go. The situation escalates when the officers try to move McLean onto the grass. Officer Woodyard's body cam is knocked to the ground. You guys. Officer Rodema says this. <laughs> It's unclear from the body cameras whether or not McLean reached for an officer's weapon. All three officers wrestle McLean to the ground. Give us more. Give us some more units. We're fighting them. At this moment, one of the officers uses a carotid control hold on McLean, a tactic that involves an officer placing his arm around a subject's neck, applying pressure, and restricting blood to the brain via the carotid arteries. Responding officers later told an Aurora police investigator that McLean briefly went unconscious and the officers released the hold. At 10.46 p.m., just over two minutes after the first officer made contact with him, McLean is pinned to the ground and says this. 
Fighting us on the ground. Where do you use carotid? That's why I was doing. I was just going home. Oh, <laughs> I'm a juvenile and I'm different. He come out. He's out. Uh, he, was he out? Uh, he, I heard no. some snoring. I just he didn't he wasn't completely. He no, didn't lose oh, consciousness. Yeah. I'm just different. He tried I'm to get my gun. He tried. <laughs> oh, that's all I was doing. It was actually Rosenblatt. I'm so he, sorry. You're going, dude. I have no that's gun. Where I, that's where I tried karate. Like I don't do out. that stuff. I don't do any he fighting. He went other units that are not here. Why? They can Were slow it down me? a little bit. I don't move the huggins. I don't even kill flies. Before. We got him to I don't eat meat. I... Do we have I'm anything other than you being suspicious? No. People. No. I mean, I tried We're to stop him. walking away. Yeah, uh, 226, we need to slow everybody down. Yeah, Responding early. officers later tell an investigator that McLean was actively resisting and fighting the officers' attempts to place him into handcuffs. What I tried to do I tried. was become better. We, we yeah. started it because he, he reached for Rosie's like, gun. Yeah. Yeah. And we had him on the wall. All right. At 10.49 p.m., McLean throws up a first time. Uh, Stop. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, was he trying to do that? Was he saying? I can't breathe correctly because... Over the next four minutes, McLean gets sick a few more times. Officers are also heard multiple yeah, times asking him to stop fighting. Are you rolling this way, dude? Yeah. Are you able to? Yeah. Legs locking up. There you go. Just like that. Keep. You're good. Don't, don't get up, that. dude. It's not going to be good for you. I'm telling you right now. If you keep messing around, we'll put, I'm bring my dog out. He's going to dog bite you. You understand me? Yeah. At 10.54 p.m., McLean is still on the ground, and an officer says this. So when the ambulance gets here, we're going to go ahead and give him some ketamine. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Perfect, yeah, dude. Perfect. Perfect. Let's give that a couple of minutes and then we'll put him on. Whatever he's okay. on, right. yeah. he has incredible strength. Yeah, crazy yeah. strength. strength. I had him in 10 59 p.m. A fire medic administers 500 milligrams of ketamine to McLean in an attempt to sedate him. Two to three minutes later, he is loaded onto an ambulance. And at 11 07 p.m., just over 20 minutes after the first officer made contact, Responding officers so are told McLean does not have a pulse. He just cored. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. So, sit tight. McLean was right. resuscitated at the scene and taken to the hospital right. where he would be declared brain dead three days later. The coroner concluded last November that a combination of physical exertion and a yeah, narrow left coronary artery contributed to McLean's death, but could not determine the cause of his death. He added that it could have been either an accidental death caused by a reaction to the ketamine, a natural death, or a death linked to the carotid control hold used by officers. The district attorney later announced he would not charge the officers involved, saying that the evidence does not support a conclusion that McLean's death was the direct result of any particular action or individual. The family told NBC News that they believed an independent investigation should have been conducted initially. Now the governor has appointed a special prosecutor to reopen the investigation. We've reached out to the police union for comment and have not heard back. We are learning new details surrounding the deadly deputy-involved shooting of a teen with autism in San Bernardino County. The teen's family is now filing a claim over the death. Fox 11's Christy Pajardo, she's live there in Apple Valley now with the very latest for us. Christy? Marla, as part of that legal claim and eventual lawsuit, the family wants to know if the deputy who fired knew that the teen had autism, and if he didn't, why? They say deputies had been out to the house at least five times before and that their son's disorder was well known to the department. He was smart, but he had issues. And there's nothing wrong with people having issues. Supporters, lawyers, and the family of Ryan Gaynor gathered just feet from where he was shot and killed in Apple Valley on March 9th. His family says the 15-year-old boy who had autism had been having a tantrum, but no one thought a call to 911 would end in his death. They have blood on their hands because they shot and killed and slaughtered a young boy who really wasn't fully capable of appreciating what the police were trying to do to him. The family attorneys say the body cam footage shows a series of mistakes. Where's he at? First, the deputy yells out, which is known to agitate people with autism. When Ryan appears with a hoe in his hand, hey, get back! Get back! the deputy pulls out his gun. 
which they say would also scare a person on the spectrum. Then the deputy, who's being chased, fires. They had options. They had tasers. They had a taser. They had pepper spray. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department wouldn't comment, citing pending litigation. But Sheriff Shannon Dykus did address the media following the shooting. Yes, our deputies do carry tasers, so you actually hear um, Ryan's family say, why didn't you use a taser? Those techniques don't always work. And when you're talking time and distance and making these critical, life-threatening decisions, particularly with somebody coming down with a deadly weapon on you. Ryan's family says they adopted him as a toddler from foster care with a host of health problems. But despite every challenge, he excelled at math even though he couldn't master simple tasks like tying his shoe and washing his face. That's, that's the Ryan I know. That's the Ryan I remember. That's the Ryan that I miss. I can't even sleep at night because all I think about is Ryan. The family's attorneys say just before the shooting, a family member, a cousin, made a second call to 911 to say that the situation had resolved itself and that Ryan had settled down. They want to know if that information was passed along to the deputies and if the deputy who fired had been to the home before. They say they're hoping to get those answers as part of the lawsuit. Live in Apple Valley, Christy Fajardo, Fox 11 News. What we don't know is killing us both literally and figuratively. The more we know, the faster autism awareness grows.